a lot of people will have seen The Guard with Brendan Gleeson, and it's uh, the same director and Brendan Gleeson back together again. The director, of course, is John Michael McDonough, and it's the tale of a very troubled Irish priest. His major problem is he lives in a small community in Ireland, and he is very much seen as the figurehead of the church. And, of course, with all of the, the problems that have been with uh, child abuse within the church and the church covering up, he has somehow become almost like the scapegoat for the church at large. And yet he is fundamentally himself a good man and he's trying to, in a way, absorb all of the poison from the, from the society around him. He's in the, uh, the confession box one week and a man comes in and he tells him this story and he tells him something that he's going to do. If we hear the clip, it sets it up. Why don't you make a formal complaint? You can testify. The man's dead. I don't know what to say to you. I have no answer for you, I'm sorry. What good would it do anyway if he were still alive? There's no point in killing a bad priest, but killing a good one. That'd be a shock now. They wouldn't know what to make of that. I'm going to kill you, Father. I'm going to kill you because you've done nothing wrong. I'm going to kill you because you're innocent. Not right now, though. I'll give you enough time to put your house in order, make your peace with God. Sunday week, let's say. I'll meet you down on the beach there, down by the water there. <laughs> Killing a priest on a Sunday. That'll be a good one. Do you not have anything to say to me, Father? Not right now, no. But I'm sure I'll think of something by Sunday week. Well, that's a clip. There you are. It's brilliant. That is such a brilliant setup. There is a slightly more candid bit just before that leads into that, in which the man explains that he has been the subject of child abuse uh, as a child, and but it was too raw for us to to actually play at this time in the afternoon. So you have this setup. You've got this priest. He knows that he's got a week to live. He's got a, a week to put his life in order. Coincidentally, his his daughter. Uh, who is, uh, again, having man trouble, has attempted suicide and has turned up in the village. So he's dealing with all of that. He's dealing with these disparate people within the village, all of whom are very troubled and have problems, trying to find a place in an island where religion has fallen away and broken into disrepute so people are not following it anymore, but they've got no value system left. Their country seems to have been taken over by money men, people who speculated on buildings, who destroyed the economy, who somehow kind of, you know, scooped out the middle of the society and left it without any values whatsoever. And there's this guy, this one man, trying to be a good man in this small town. Now, I suspect that um, the tonal problems are the things that people are going to have a problem with. I mean, there is in the first third of the film quite a lot of the dark, uh, slightly flippant humour that you expect from something uh, like The Guard or, in fact, John Michael McDonough's brother's film uh, In Bruges, which mm -hmm. also had... Um, Brendan Gleeson in and as the film goes on it becomes darker and darker and in fact I mean and I don't say this lightly this is one of the few films that I think actually could be compared to the work of someone like Louis Boonwell the famous you know wow. Catholic anarchist who had a sense of the ridiculous and the absurd at the same time as understanding the system that religion had become and the way that it corrupts a society from within. I really thought it was spectacular. I mean, it reminded me of High Noon or something. Mm. I mean, it, it, you know, Gleeson has said that it's not so much a who done it, but who's going to do it film. And at the heart of it, I mean, I could watch Brendan Gleeson read the telephone director. I mean, you just think he's fantastic. You know, he just is one of those actors. And this film really deals with big themes, doesn't it? It's a big biblical themes, if you like. But they're and not, uh, least of all, forgiveness. And not forgiving, you know, not just forgiveness of other people and the wrongs that have been committed against you, but forgiveness of yourself for the wrongs that you've done. Yeah. And, you know, he is a man with a death sentence on him and we see that sentence. And I, I mean, I, I loved him in it. I loved so much about it. The, the tone, there are tonal things for me, but they're very, I mean, they're very nitpicky on my part. There's just, there's times when you, you're in this movie, Brendan Gleeson is sort of there with the weight and sort of true uh, nature of his acting. And then there's a bit where you're, you're in a Father Ted uh, episode sometimes. You think, well, that's, that's a bit jarring for me, but it's full of great, it's great writing. I mm. mean, I think He's not afraid of the speech, is he? That's the great thing. Oh, and he yeah. gives it... There's a scene with uh, Aidan Gillen in the pub when he just comes up and he just gives this speech to Brent, and it's brilliant. Mm. So that, that writing I really love and trusting the actors with those big speeches and language. I mean, it's great to see just the yeah. language like this being... Spoken. I think it is visually brilliant as well. And I think 
for me, this feels like a much more mature film than the, the, than the previous one. I mean, I really liked uh, The Guard, but I think this looks like a fully finished... This looks like a proper filmmaker. I mean, you, you talk about Heine, and it is a Western. It works as a Western. The bar, which is a key place where everyone comes to to have their kind of ferocious arguments and, you know, maybe spills over into violence is key. Um, the, it, it's a, I think it's an, an, a film of incredible anger. I, you can sense is, the yeah. fury yeah. at... The Catholic Church and what happened with child abuse and all of that is it, but it's not dealt with in an obvious way. It's dealt with in this incredibly clever way, and that's the whole point of it, really. Yeah, is. what's wonderful about it is his very goodness is, what, is what makes him a target. Yeah, and so that's... you've got this intriguing idea that he is a good priest. He's not, he, and there's no doubt about that. You're not, you're not thinking, oh, he's, he's secretly but he's not, not good. He's not good in Pat O'Brien way. Is no, no, he? no, I mean he's a flawed a, man. A flaw, but he, he's not a bad priest. He's no. not, you know, he, 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 he's, he's not doing wrong in that sense. No. He's a moral. He's a very moral figure. Moral. And he is so good, and he's it's so he's so soulful, isn't he? He's like every single scene, you kind of feel him, and you you believe everything, every single thing he's doing. So you've got that. You you've got this. The casting is brilliant. Chris O'Dowd, who you think of as this funny guy, uh, you know, a master at doing. He's a funny guy. He's a funny guy, mm -hmm. but very much cast against type in this film. You've got Dylan Moran, similarly a comedian, mm -hmm. playing this horrendous big businessman figure, this totally amoral guy mm -hmm. whose wife and kids have left. Totally him. lost, isn't totally he? Totally lost. Man. Um, you've got Dom Gleeson, uh, yes, uh, Brendan's son, amazingly yeah. cast in this weird role, only in one scene, as a yeah. serial killer yeah. pops up. And I have to say, my one, my one slight critique of the film, but I loved it as well, I think it is an absolutely brilliant film, is that the setup, it, it, you've got this priest and his flock, I mean, everyone where he lives is, is incredible. They're all incredible. There's this, there's a great novelist. Yes, you yeah, know, I love that character. That character yeah. they're, they're all extraordinary. And you've even got this extraordinary serial killer who mm -hmm. suddenly goes to see in prison. And I did feel almost that that character, that scene, was perhaps, for me, slightly stretching it in terms of he's surrounded yeah. by these extraordinary things. But that's my only... There only is a theatricality moment. to the film. There is, yeah. and, and there's a heightened... And the, yeah. the thing about having Brendan Gleeson in the heart of it is he just roots it all. It would be very interesting to see a film like this with someone else in the heart. I mean, he has that bat on through Irish uh, acting, I think, you know, like, you know, sort of, you know. I can't, they've all gone out of my head, but you know, those great Irish actors that that you you know, and I just think he just does solidify the film oh, in yeah. a way. And then around him is this satellite of just crazy characters, really. Yeah. Dolan McCann, I was thinking of. Oh, yeah, 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 like yeah. That, absolutely. You know? yeah. Just yeah. great people. Completely. Yeah. But also. And we should mention Kelly Riley. It's Kelly Riley is great. I mean, every single person, every single. You could say, when they must have been sent the script, they've all got killer scenes. You know what I mean? He gives. He's very clever because you might it might just be one scene. His son is just in that one scene, but they've all got amazing stuff to do. They must have loved it. You know, we've all, they've all got brilliant little things to sink yes. their teeth into as an actor. Yeah. yeah. It must be extraordinary. And it works. And it works dramatically because each each one you're fascinated how it's going to turn yeah. out. I think because the structure of it is so strong and there's the spine running through it so even the moments where you think oh tonally this is a bit odd yeah. you know there's still that sense of he's in control of this material you know visually it's very impressive but the writing is there and I mean some people for example had problem with David Hare's recent things the Turks and Kaikos oh, yeah, well, they um, were tedious. but the, you <laughs> well, know but you still have that sense of writing you know that is the spine of everything oh, but... and you and you go with the theory theatricality of it because you just accept that yes everything's got to be full. But I think this is dramatizing those themes yes, so well is. in such Definitely. an I mean it's entertaining because it is a, it's a mystery as well who is the who is this person who's threatening him yeah. and you don't know right until the end and yeah. also I, I have to say not, not giving anything away it's satisfying it doesn't leave you know I was afraid oh, at one point is. I thought you know, he might leave us he might leave us oh. dangling but no it's a proper satisfying Oh no conclusion. it's a fully rounded film but and the, the word theatricality I don't mean in any sort of criticism I think the, the braveness to be able able to write it's like that sort of Pulp Fiction uh, yeah. Tarantino yeah. like writing of like giving people real speeches a yeah. heightened way of talking and I love that and yet believable it doesn't get Very it doesn't believable. feel in, it never feels indulgent to no, me, unlike uh, unlike recent Tarantino which veers into that it's when, a, it, when yeah. it Tarantino is good it's like this style yeah yeah yeah, yeah.